Good morning, and I'm happy to be with you again this morning in our little conversations during this Lenten season. Unfortunately, I will not be with you live today, but Sister will help afterwards, Sister Geraldine will help afterwards to facilitate some of your questions on the topic that I want to present to you. And we'll begin this session, as we do always, with taking time, first of all, to pray and also to listen to the Word of God. And so, let us pray. This reading is taken from the Book of Wisdom. Wisdom I loved and sought after from my youth. I sought to take her for my bride and was enamored of her beauty. She adds to nobility with the splendor of companionship with God. Even the Lord of all loved her, for she is the teacher in the understanding of God, the selector of his works. And if riches be a desirable possession in life, what is more rich than wisdom, who produces all things? And if prudence renders service, who in the world is a better craftsman than she? Or, if one loves justice, the fruits of her works are virtues. For she teaches temperance and prudence, justice and fortitude, and nothing in life is more useful for men than these. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My dear friends, the wisdom literature of the Old Testament that we just heard hands on a practical wisdom for daily life that the Hebrew people learned throughout the ages. They share with each other basically how to live. Here, the Word of God reveals to us that we are called to love and seek wisdom, even to enter into a kind of marriage with wisdom. The reason Solomon speaks this way is because he understands that wisdom is so close to God. The Catechism quotes St. Gregory of Nyssa saying, the goal of a virtuous life is to become like God. In this context, we can see why Solomon wanted to be so close to wisdom, because wisdom comes from God and teaches us about God and consequently about ourselves and how we are to live. This is an important aspect of our faith. The Lord desires us to be like Him. And as we know, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is the gift of wisdom. It is so that we can be like God. Remember that our weekly conversations this Lent are about virtue. Last week, we quoted the Catechism's definition of virtue, which I'd like to recall for you today. According to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, a virtue is an habitual and firm disposition to do the good. It allows the person not only to perform good acts, but also to give the best of himself. The virtuous person tends toward the good with all his sensory and spiritual powers. He pursues the good and chooses it in concrete actions. This definition is important for us as we continue to reflect on the idea of virtue in our life. Now we know that there are different kinds of virtue, that is, different habits that we develop that touch on different aspects of our personality, our human condition, and our lives. Over the next four conversations that I will have with you, I would like to focus on what are called the cardinal virtues. We heard these four virtues in a scripture passage that began our conversation this morning. They are prudence, justice, fortitude, and temperance. Today I'd like to take our time together to look at the virtue of prudence. I will give you a definition of prudence a little later. But first, let me give you an example of prudence. The virtues, because they make us truly human, are best explained by looking at the lives of truly virtuous people. 
these people we call saints. We could talk about the virtues theoretically. However, I want to talk to you about them practically so that you can see that they are meant to be lived every day by real people like you, like me, to be lived every day. But first an example. Today I'd like to hold up to you a very interesting saint. His name is Saint Dominic Savio. A lot of times today, we do not demand a lot of young people. I'm sorry to be able to say that because I think your ability far outdistance what we ask of you. In fact, too often our society expects young people to be irresponsible, to make big mistakes, and to lead somewhat reckless lives. For example, what do most Americans expect of college students? When you think about that, today people start to think about partying, about premarital sex, drugs, half-heartedly studying, and so on. We sometimes give you high school students the same impression. How many of you think that because you are young that you are allowed to be irresponsible or to do foolish things? Are Friday and Saturday part night parties the reason you get through the week? Are you involved in relationships that aren't demanding the best of you? It's important to understand that young people, you young people, are not powerless against the temptations of the world. Young people are not just some future reality for society and the church. You, my good friends, you are the society and you are the church today. We're not waiting for you. You are here. The Lord has placed you here. You are society. You are the church today. Do not, please do not believe for a minute that great things and holy things are not possible for you right now, today, at this moment. I don't want to call you future and negate the important role you have in society and in the church right now. Each of you, with the energy and vitality of young believers, possesses great talents and great gifts that God has given you to share with others, especially with the church today. Let's take a moment to look at someone who early on in his life realized that this was true for him. I think that St. Dominic Savio is a good example of a life of virtue, especially of a prudent life. This is not the other St. Dominic who lived in the Middle Ages. We're talking about this St. Dominic who lived in the first part of the 1800s. St. Dominic Savio was only 14 years old when he died. Think about that. He was about the age of a freshman in high school. He is just the third young saint who was not martyred for his faith to be held up as an example of holiness and virtue by the church. Dominic embodies the scripture passage that we prayed at the beginning of our conversation this morning. Quote, Wisdom, I have loved you and sought after you from my youth. From his earliest days, Dominic loved God and he wanted to serve the church. We are told that he went to his parish priest when he was about five years old and he begged him to serve the Mass. Several years later, when preparing for his First Holy Communion, he made four resolutions that would give him direction and drive throughout his young life. I would suggest to you that at that early age, Dominic was taking control of his life. He understood that his life was his and that he could do great things. And so he made four resolutions. 
And these were the four resolutions. The first one, to go to confession and Holy Communion often. Dominic understood that we sometimes sin and that that is not something God wants us to do. And so he also recognized that God is merciful. And so he had no problem with going to God to say he made a mistake, knowing that God would forgive him and help him to start anew. And he also understood that Holy Communion was where he encountered Jesus Christ and encountered the life that Jesus wanted him to live. And through Holy Communion would help him to be able to live that. His second resolution was to give Sundays and Holy Days completely to God. He understood that God has given us all of time and he felt it was just appropriate that he could give back to God a Sunday dedicated to the Lord. The third resolution was to have as his best friends Jesus and Mary. He understood that Jesus and Mary are not just some people from history but are people today who want to be involved with each one of us. And so Dominic knew them, not simply as people in the past, but he knew them as his friends each and every day. And perhaps the most striking resolution he made was death, but not sin. Dominic understood that the biggest evil was sin, that he would rather die than do something that was hurtful to himself or hurtful to the God who loves him and called him to life. Early on in his life, Dominic decided it would be better to die than to sin, better to have his earthly life end than to offend God by choosing to sin. It should come as no surprise to us then when we hear of the famous story of Dominic's fundamental decision in life. One day, Dominic Savio decided to become a saint. And this decision made all the difference in his life. Our Holy Father, Pope Benedict, recently in speaking to young people, young high school students in England, suggested to them what Dominic chose. Our Holy Father, Pope Benedict, suggested that all of us should strive to be saints, and especially you, the high school students of this day and this age, to seek to be saints. Saint Dominic Savio is a great example of someone who exercised the virtue of prudence. The Catechism tells us that, quote, prudence is the virtue that disposes practical reason to discern our true good in every circumstance and to choose the right means of achieving it. In the book of Proverbs, we hear, quote, the prudent man looks where he is going, end quote. Dominic Savio looked to where he was going, to heaven, and made choices throughout his young life to get there. He wanted to become a saint, and he knew that every day the choices he made, how he lived his life, would either support his desire or break it down. When we exercise prudence, we give ourselves boundaries by setting rules and measures about how we are to act, how we are to speak, how we are to relate to others. We need boundaries. We need boundaries in life to help guide us along our way. Too often, we can see what happens when there aren't boundaries. People without boundaries become less than human. They actually become less than themselves. In many ways, people without boundaries are lost. They lose their very self. Here's an easy example I would suggest to you in terms of using prudence. The question I would say to you is, what time did you go to bed last night? Were you up late into the night on your computer? Or were you glued to the TV watching some particular show? 
If you went to bed late last night, did you wake up feeling good this morning? I would suggest probably not. Matter of fact, it was probably very difficult to get out of bed. A prudent person would see that going to bed at a reasonable time is the right choice so that the next day he or she would be rested, would be alert, would be ready to go through the day as their true self. A prudent person would make the judgment that he or she can't stay up all night and function well the next day. This is a very simple, yet one way, that prudence can help us on a really human level, in a very practical way. We set the boundaries of how much sleep we need to function well, and we choose to go to bed at a certain time. This is an ordinary use of prudence. But you and I could come up with a lot of examples of more important uses of prudence in our lives. I'd like to add just one other right now. Many of you have recently perhaps received your driver's license. And sometimes you will be out with your friends. And you may be talking and having a good time in a car. But sometimes you may decide that you want to go a little faster. That the speed limit is not quite as exciting as you'd like it to be. And sometimes you're going to decide to put your foot to the accelerator and to give everybody a thrill. I just want to warn you about that. Unfortunately, our experience has been that many young people make that mistake. And the result is tremendous tragedy. Yes, we would like to go faster. Yes, we'd like a thrill. But we have to understand that behind a wheel, that we're responsible for those others who are in our car and also for ourselves. And so prudence dictates that we should stay within the speed limit. Because in doing that, we are safe and so is everyone else. With the help of prudence, we apply the good moral principles by which we live our lives to the particular choices and situations we encounter so we can always seek what is good and avoid what is evil. Here's a little heavier example of the need to exercise prudence. Right now, you young people, your bodies are developing and maturing. You know this. As seniors in high school, you have probably been discovering the gift of your sexuality for a number of years. Since you entered into puberty, your body has undergone many changes. And these changes are good. It is something that God desires. At the same time, while your bodies are pushing you to exercise your natural and human desires, it's important that you understand that God has a beautiful plan for you. And he teaches you how to use the gift of your sexuality. This plan, which I believe you are aware of, is that the gift of sexuality is to be exercised by a husband and wife in the exclusive and committed relationship of marriage. God has designed our human sexuality for a purpose. There is a purpose to our sexuality and it is good. It is to cooperate with God's grace in bringing new life into the world. Sex, therefore, is for married couples. We call this a moral principle. So the question is, how do you, as a single high school student, exercise the virtue of prudence when it comes to your gift of your sexuality? I would suggest that you start by setting goals and boundaries. You have to choose, like Saint Dominic Savio, to want something great for yourself in life. He wanted to be a saint. I want you to be a saint as well. But in order for that goal to become real, you have to want to be a saint. Maybe when it comes to your sexuality, you may feel like another saint, Saint Augustine, 
who prayed, quote, O Lord, make me chaste, but not yet. St. Augustine, before he became a saint, had a sense of his goal, but not the virtue of prudence in that prayer. Prudence guides us to say, I want to be a saint. I want to become the best me I can possibly be. Therefore, in every area of my life, I'm going to set up boundaries that help guide me to become that saint. With regard to our human sexuality, the boundaries might seem often a little fuzzy. For example, when we're talking about human sexuality, does that mean, can I date? Of course you can. But then comes the question, well, how far can I go? Can I kiss? Can I hold hands? Maybe we have to ask, what's the purpose of dating anyway? You see, it's important to understand, dating is not meant for you to give a trial run to having serious relationships, at least not at this stage in your life when you're in high school. Dating next year and as you get older has the purpose of helping you discern your vocation to the married life and to finding your spouse. So the question is, how far can I go? Has come has to come un, under that understanding. How far can I go must always be directed towards the purpose of our sexuality and the purpose of our relationship with others. We believe as Catholic Christians that our sexuality is a gift. It's a power that is given to married couples. So at your age now, prudence would say that you not go so far as to lose control of your ability to stop. Prudence would say, you never use another person as an object of your own pleasure seeking. Prudence would say to all of those guys out there, man up and exercise some self-control. And to you ladies, know and guard the great beauty and dignity you have been given by our God who loves you. Today's society often is confused about sexuality. It does not understand the great gift of our human sexuality that God has given to us. And it's important for us really to come to understand that. It starts, first of all, by having a deep appreciation for ourselves. We must see ourselves, first of all, as a great gift of God and come to appreciate how much God loves us. And when we have a deep love for oneself, we have a deep respect for ourselves. And so we want to make sure that everything that God has placed within us is used in its proper fashion. And part of that is our human sexuality. Part of that is using it in a responsible method in the way that God intended it to be used. And so the aspect of prudence is for us in high school and as we go forward to make sure that we're using our sexuality in concert with the way God intended it to be used. A prudent man and a prudent woman recognizes the need for boundaries with regard to human sexuality because they do not want to lose control over their own bodies. Practically speaking, this means, means being careful how physical your relationship gets. And it means being careful how emotional your relationship gets too. Just because you are young doesn't mean you can't be strong and purpose-driven in your life. Use the gift of intelligence to examine the situations you find yourself in and to make good decisions to avoid compromising your goals and integrity. Now this might mean being counter-cultural. It does mean going against the norms that our culture offers you today. This might mean taking the risk of not giving in to peer pressure. And this might mean becoming your true self, becoming a holy person, becoming a saint. This is not something abnormal. In reality, becoming a saint is what is normal because that is the way that God has designed each one of us. 
St. Paul often in his writings always spoke to the saints of the church, people like you and me. He wasn't talking to those who had already passed from this life. St. Paul would encourage all of us to live out our dignity as sons and daughters of God, as the saints God intended us to be. I want to ask the same of you, and I think you should ask the same of me, that we should all strive to be saints. To be saints doesn't just simply mean to be a goody-goody person. To be saints means to take seriously our humanity, to be the person that God has called me to be, and to live in concert with the way His Son Jesus has taught us to live. Today, you are young. In the next few years, you will mature into adulthood. The virtue of prudence is not a power given to you for some time later in life, but for right now. In fact, it is the power given to you to use now so that you can make the good choices that will help you become who God calls you to be, to become your true self. Society needs prudent men and women who know what it is right and good and to make choices to support what is right and what is good. Prudence guides the judgment of conscience according to the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Prudence guides the judgment of conscience. This is something that the Lord has placed within us to know the right and to know what is wrong. Prudence is exercised when we listen to our conscience, when we listen deep inside ourselves to what the Lord is saying. And you know that yourself. I often use the example, for example, when sometimes we're tempted to tell a lie. Sometimes it may seem prudent for us, we might think, to be dishonest with somebody. But I know you've had the experience. Once you've told the lie, there's a certain sense of disquiet within you. The next time you encounter that person, there's something different about your relationship. The reason for that is that deep inside, there is a conscience. And the conscience told you that this was not a good thing. Prudence would be a virtue in which we tend to always try to listen to our conscience. That when we feel something is not right, prudence would say, it probably is not right and it's something we should not do. You see, these are practical impl implications of what we mean when we talk about prudence. This virtue, if you use it, will help you every day of your life, starting right now, guiding the choices you make and the decisions you are faced with. Through the intercession of Saint Dominic Savio, a prudent man and a young saint, May each of you be given the grace to exercise this virtue in your lives. The Lord gives us these virtues. They are the cardinal virtues. Prudence is one of them. In the weeks ahead, we will talk about justice, fortitude, and temperance. But today, I want to leave you with this understanding that if you develop the virtue of prudence in your life, I guarantee you that you will find peace and happiness in life. I don't guarantee that the road will always be easy because when we exercise prudence, sometimes we have to make decisions that were not always popular. But the popular decisions don't always bring us happiness. I guarantee you that the saints would tell you that if you follow prudence, if you live prudence in your life, that the Lord will bring you happiness and joy that the world cannot give you. And most importantly, you'll have the experience of knowing truly who you are, the God made you, the God, the person that God made you to be. And that's really something that's wonderful because God has made us wonderful if we'll only use the prudence that he's given to us to be able to discern our true self. I look forward to seeing you next week. May God bless you.